morning and welcome. It is the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. Today we light the first, second, and third candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope, the second is peace, and the third candle is joy. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst forth in song, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us in human flesh, and you abide, abide with us in the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your joy, and help us shine as light to the world. Jesus Christ, who makes our joy complete. Amen. Savior now draws near. O come, let us worship. 
our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. They said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the reward of horses of the nation. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again, again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastation. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will pray the canticle by full verse. Christ revealed our frailty and our folly, our trespasses and our humiliations. Christ also revealed his blessed power, his blessed wisdom and love. He protects us as tenderly and as sweetly when we are in greatest need. He raises us in spirit and turns everything to glory and joy without envy. God is the ground and the substance, the very essence of nature. God is the true father and mother of natures. We are all bound to God by nature, and we are all bound to God by grace. And this grace is for all the world, because it was our fresh mother, Christ. For this fair nature was prepared by Christ, for the honor and the nobility of all, and for the joy and bliss of salvation. reading from Paul's letter, first letter to the church in Thessalonica. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after him, me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Advent. We're kind of halfway through it. Advent always to me is the season of wishes and dreams. We all remember when we were young and we would get those catalogs in the mail. And we'd take the catalogs and we'd earmark or circle those things we wanted Santa to bring us. Instead, these days, we go online and we fill out wish lists instead. It's the season where we're told to hurry up, bake cookies, organize presents, send out invitations for parties, plan a festive Christmas dinner, connect with old friends, eat lots of delicious treats, etc., etc. And then on the other side, we have the church. The church telling us that it's also the time to slow down, to reflect on the second coming of Jesus and then on the birth of Jesus into our world when heaven and earth kissed the incarnation. That's the way it always seemed to be until now. Now everything is different. Most of us are planning small gatherings with those people who are in, quote, our COVID-19 bubble. Presents, well, you know. You know what's happening to presents. We're all just making Amazon bigger and wealthier. It is the season of wishes and dreams. But this year, more than ever, we are wishing for good health. We dream of the months ahead when finally, Finally, we'll be able to be vaccinated, dreaming then that everything will go back to normal, as it was before the pandemic. We wish. We dream. Isaiah is one of God's great dreamers. He continually reminds us of the world that the Messiah is going to give us, a world where Jesus will bring the good news to the oppressed, where he will bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners. He will declare a year of the Lord's favor, 
Doesn't that sound wonderful? How we need that dream now. Isaiah's dream is one of peace and prosperity. We're all gathered in harmony. A time when all things live together peacefully. The wolf and the lamb, the calf and the lion will lie down together. Oh, it's a dream we pray for today. When we see almost 300,000 people have died of the virus, many without those they love near them. When we read of people threatening violence against those who handled the election in their states, it's unsettling. But is Isaiah's dream more than just a pretty description? Is it perhaps the dream, the vision of our world that we as followers of the gospel are called to name, to speak aloud, and to make happen? We are the ones called to continue to name the dream by naming the injustice, the violence, and workings towards the end working to where our world can be one. And where we are today, maybe it's not our world that needs to be one. Maybe it's our country. We are the ones preparing our world for the realization of God's dream. John the Baptist, another of God's dreamers, dared to name the dream in his time and place. He dared to call those who were complacent to wake up, to be alert that the Messiah is coming. John's voice came shouting from the wilderness into the marketplace to call those who were asleep to wake up, to pay attention. We are those dreamers today. We are the ones called to call others out of complacency, Call others out of living on automatic pilot. But it is not a voice of condemnation. It is a gentle voice that calls all to wake up, to live in this moment, and to find the beauty of heaven touching earth again. The coming of Jesus that John proclaims tells us of that glorious mystery when heaven reaches down to kiss earth. It is a voice that calls us to see the beauty of God's dream that surrounds us. During this Advent season, we are asked to cut open our lives as a community, as a church, to the dream, the dream of Isaiah and John, the dream that God gives us. How are we naming the dream in our families that may need reconciliation and healing? How are we naming the dream in our communities and our church? How are we the voice calling others to wake up out of their complacency to the beauty of God's dream? A dream of peace, equality, prosperity, and love for all God's creation. For in naming the dream individually and collectively, we are preparing and being an Advent people who can rejoice in the twinkling of lights, the rush of holiday activity, and the quiet reflection at an evening sunset. I know the lives and the voices of Jay, John, and Isaiah, the dreamers that call me to wake up and beware of God's dream are here and now. And if I can keep that dream alive in myself, I can help others to dream it as well. Then together, because none of us can do it alone, together we can name the dream that our world that our communities, that 
even our families are so hungry to hear. We are a people who dare to stand in the darkness with our faces ablaze with the light of the dream and say, repent, open your eyes. God's dream is at hand. Standing in the light of God's dream, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, spiritual communion prayer is not in the bulletin for this Sunday. It was just a simple mistake I made. So I invite you to pray along with me in your hearts as I say the prayer for all of us. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, Remembering particularly my own parish, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern in and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. And praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Stir up your power, O Lord great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty God, You've given us grace at this time to perform for and make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as you may be best for us, granting us in this form knowledge of your truth Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore.